Grand Theft George. It had been a few weeks since Thomas had had his accident. A careless firelighter had fidgeted with his controls, and he crashed into the station master's house. A very battered and broken Thomas was sent away to the works, while Percy and Toby had to run the branch line until he came back. They never realized how much difference having a single engine missing could make, and were worked off their wheels to get their work done on time. The station master had paid a lot of money to get his house repaired, and the noises of drills and hammers often raged early in the morning and late in the night, which caused the engines to have trouble getting a good night's sleep. I'm sorry to tell you that with all this construction came the insufferable George the Steamroller. He was tasked with paving the roads that had been damaged by Thomas's wheels. The engines all disliked George. He made rude remarks about the rails, and how the roads were better. And in George's opinion, Thomas's crash was all just extra excuses to fuel his anti-rail rants. Early one morning, Percy and Toby had quite the rude awakening. Rotten rails, he muttered. What are you up to, George? Toby snapped. That silly little blue engine deserved it. Fancy creation in the buildings by yourself just because someone flipped a little switch? Peh, you engines are just unreliable. I should be tearing up and tarmacking your rails instead of patching a few holes in the road. Unreliable? shouted Percy in retaliation. We're stronger and faster than little machines like you. Stand down, Percy, Toby replied. Arguing just encourages him. All of you know, you never see runaways like that happen on the roads. We've got our brakes. Come on, George, we've got roads to fix. Right away, sir. So long, tin kettles. Railways are no good. Turn them into roads. Pull them up. Turn them into roads. Toby and Percy exchanged annoyed looks and seemed away to catch their first trains. There were three schoolboys who lived in Tidmouth and were known for causing trouble along the railway, such as when they threw rocks at Henry's passenger train, which smashed their windows. They happened to live in the same neighborhood as the station master and liked watching the builders hard at work. While George and the workers repaired the house, the three boys stood nearby, watching the work and chatting. Oh, Johnny, look at that. It can flatten those roads like a rolling pin. Must be fun to drive, eh? The boys looked at each other mischievously. They had found their next target. The workmen finished all their repairs by the end of the day. They packed up and headed home, ready for tomorrow. See, the next day was Sodor Day, a national holiday on Sodor, celebrating its first founding. The workers of the construction company had time off, and students were given the day off from school. George was enjoying his day off, dozing in the sun, not a care in the world. Suddenly, he heard the sound of footsteps on the gravel approaching him, and people talking secretively. Huh? Work already? But it's my day off, grumbled George as he sleepily opened one eye. The workmen were smaller than usual and talked a bit higher pitched. They weren't in uniform either. All right, Johnny, go it, cried one as they climbed into George's cab. Give me a minute, Ralph, said another. I don't know where to drive this thing. Hey, what's going on? What's the assignment? said George. Um... Pave some roads at, uh, Wellsworth. Already? We just paved them a few weeks ago. Uh, they're already broken again. Just don't worry about it. Slowly, a very confused George began moving as the children cheered. As the three boys fumbled with the controls, George swerved randomly around the yard. Percy was just arriving at the station with Annie and Clarabelle. He had a few minutes before he had to leave with Thomas's local. 
As the passengers boarded the train, Percy looked over at George. Okay, Tim, he thought. Must be trying to show off. But then, he noticed the three schoolboys in the cab. Alarmed, Percy alerted the station master, who then contacted the authorities. Soon enough, George and the boys were out of the yard and speeding down the road, which for George's speed wasn't very fast anyway. George was terrified as they swerved past Birdie the bus. Hey, what's where you going, clumsy wheels? Sorry, Birdie, I can't stop. Soon, the kids saw a figure in blue approaching on his bicycle, yelling at them to stop. Uh-oh, it's the coppers! Suddenly, the kids jumped out of George's cab and ran back to their homes as fast as they could. Now without a driver, George kept rolling down the road. Concerned passers-by chased after him, hoping to try to get him to stop, but it was no use. Eventually, the road hit a curb, and unable to steer, George drove off the rails, through a field, and smashed straight into a tree. Luckily, the tree managed to stop him, and Percy soon arrived with the breakdown train. George, groaning in pain, was lifted onto a flatbed, and they set off for the works. I see those brakes didn't work out as well as you thought, eh, George? said Percy cheekily. I bet you feel pretty unreliable now. But George didn't say anything. He thought from now on, he should watch what he said. And as for the naughty kids, they were soon caught by the police and were given a very stern talking to from their parents. I think they've both learned their lessons. Don't you?